uh, with a couple of uh, additional players on the quality we had, uh, we could go on uh, much, much better in the next season if we stayed. But, you know, if you start to speak before the final cup about these things, you cannot think just about the game. Are you uh, it, it was not leading in a good uh, direction. Uh, I think it's disaster. Welcome to a special edition of No Chof There's I'm Still. To my my left here, as you can see on the screen, is Bedros. And the gentleman at the bottom, former Omoni assistant coach, Vladimir Jankovic. Vladimir Brate, how are you doing? I'm uh, very well, thank you. Everything is uh, fine. Uh, still coaching, uh, progressing uh, still in my career. And uh, as long as you're going up, it's good. <laughs> when course, you start to course. go down, it's, it's not okay. good. Yeah. It's a bumpy ride. It's a bumpy ride when you're going down. But um, yes. tell us, you're in Lithuania at the moment. Can you tell us about the club that you're, you're coaching, your head coach of, sorry? Yes, uh, that's a football club, uh, Ritteri. Uh, it's a club uh, that was uh, previously named uh, as FK Trakai. Trakai is, uh, is uh, close uh, to Vilnius. Uh, very nice, historic uh, place, beautiful on the lake. And uh, previously, the club was uh, uh, placed uh, there in Trakai, and uh, the new owners moved the club uh, to Vilnius and they changed the name. So it's now Ritteri, what means Knight. So we are Knights. And, and, and what, are the what are the targets for the next season? Uh, first of all, uh, starting this season uh, was uh, pretty bad and uh, the club uh, had uh, only one point out of four games, not scoring even one goal. And uh, it was a really uh, terrible start uh, for the team. Uh, although the club was uh, making a pretty good results and participating uh, in UEFA competitions in previous years. And uh, usually the, the club was on the, in, in the top of the table. Now uh, it's struggling. Uh, we are ninth uh, position at the moment on the half of the championship uh, out of 10 teams. And uh, I expect uh, that uh, uh, we will uh, move a little bit higher concerning the championship. But it's good uh, that we are still alive in the, in the cup competition, which is very important. This club never won any trophy. So it's... Um, it's a big challenge and the wish of the club uh, to try to win this season cup. So uh, we'll see. It's uh, many things uh, that are uh, involved uh, and uh, you need to manage to, to, to win this, also to have uh, the luck and um, we'll see. Anyway, uh, as long as there is a hope, as long as there is ambition, uh, you, can, you can move uh, things forward. 100%, 100%. Well, we've got another guest here. You know who it is. Marin Orsulic. Marin! Hello. Hi, guys. How are you doing, bro? Hello, Marin. Hello, Hello Marin. Hi. How are you? Hi, coach. How are you, coach? I'm very well. Thank you. You're not changed at all. You are the Nothing, same. huh? <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing. Just now, more without hair, but other is same. No, no, everything is the same. Even your spirit, smile, energy, everything is, is the same. Like we Go. seen each other yesterday. Yeah, thank you, coach. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 <laughs> well, it's a pleasure having both of you on. And, you know, it's going to lead me on to my question, Vladimir, you going to Amonia um, as Mr. Milovic's uh, assistant. First of all, what did you know about Omonia before you went to the club? I knew uh, all the best about Omonia since uh, I was uh, coming to Cyprus in uh, 1993, 1994, 1995. Omonia was dominating uh, these years uh, in, uh, uh, Cy in, in Cyprus, in, in Cyprus football. So, um, although I was living uh, a little bit in, in Limassol and... Um, uh, I, I knew a lot of football players from Serbia in that time coming and uh, starting to play there. 
So um, in, in, I knew Omonia as a red star in, for example, in, in Serbia, as uh, one of the best, the best club with the best history, etc. Uh, coach, I wanted to ask you, since you knew about Omonia from before and your collaboration with Mr. Milojevic, uh, if I'm correct, started around uh, 2012? From 2012 yes, to yes, 2015, 2012, yeah. Yes. Uh, did, uh, were you asked about the Cyprus and Ammonia before coming together to Ammonia? Uh, uh, I beg your pardon, I didn't hear uh, the question in the end. Uh, since you knew you were, you have been in Cyprus before getting the offer to come with Mr. Milove, Milojevic, um, yes. I'm wondering if he, if he asked you for information about Ammonia before he decided to come to Ammonia and obviously you with him. He already knew information about Ammonia because uh, we were coming uh, previous years uh, for the winter camps and uh, Vladan okay. was uh, for, for a long time playing in Greece, uh, 10 years in a row. And uh, he was very much acquainted also with, uh, with the football in Cyprus. So it was uh, all known and he knew all the information. He left uh, Chukarički football club where we were uh, working together six games. Uh, I stayed after him and uh, he just offered me collaboration in new project in, uh, for Ammonia. So I had to negotiate uh, for termination of my contract and uh, to go with him. So it was um, like that in that period. Okay. So Marin, was it, was it Mr. Milojevic and, and Vladimir that put into the club? Yes. Uh, so how did how did this happen? Did, did they know your agent or did they pick up the phone and say, oh, Marin, come to Cyprus? Really, I don't know. I don't know if they know the, the agent. I just know that I got the offer and I came there, I think, in Hilton Hotel. We were there. I meet uh, Vladimir, I meet Milojevic, first time in my life. And we had good connections, I think, three, four, five months, what we do, what we work together. And that's it. Vladimir, what do you remember about Marin when he first joined the club? Did you guys know much about him or was it something that Mr. Milojevic knew about? Uh, just as he said, uh, we met each other in the, in the hotel. Uh, we needed to have a, a good uh, holding midfielder and uh, he came and uh, we just talked uh, what is his shape, uh, is he capable to start immediately and it was going almost going uh, very fast. We were in need uh, uh, because uh, the, the championship was going on and uh, we were desperately need to to change the things uh, because uh, uh, there was a goal set uh, to go on in the cup and uh, to move the team up. So uh, he came in right time and uh, all the things were going well. Uh, the luck was uh, also a very good thing that uh, even Runia was also there. So their uh, uh, compatriots and uh, it was easier to for him to fit in. Although he speak uh, English and he's very independent and professional person, Marin. So it was easy, easy for him. And bo both guys are from uh, from the seaside. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so it must have been easy getting used to Cyprus, Marin, the, sea, the seaside and everything. Always seaside. Then again, Left Corsia, there's no beaches. No. Nah, it's okay. I was in Ayavarvara, so Larnaca was 10 <laughs> minutes away, so it's okay. No, but like like Vladimir said, really we had like Ian, Ivan and me and uh, coaches, so we speak the same language, and the coaches are really in that moment was uh, really uh, they had very good connection with all dressing room uh, with Nuno, with Marhasa, with uh, uh, Skembri, with uh, Sheridan. Really, with these old players, they had very good connection, and uh, the atmosphere in the team was very good, and. It was very easy to me because Vladimir and Milojevic, we all speak the same language. And when you have in Cyprus or uh, everywhere you play, that you have the the people who will help you, who will speak your language, it's much easier than, you know, than when you, I don't know, come to Arabia and nobody speak your language. Uh, even English is uh, like when I was in Korea, even English, uh, it's language that speak maybe few players in the team. So it's very difficult to work like this, you know. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. and and in uh, in Omonia was like I'm home, like in, I'm in Croatia, so it it was good. The thing is, when uh, you guys joined the club, well, when when Mr. Milojevic and yourself joined the club, Vladimir, um, as far as I remember, I think we only lost was it three games up until 
the playoffs. I think we only lost three games until the playoffs when you guys took, took charge of the team. Yes, I think you lost yet three. We finished so far behind. But yeah, I mean, we finished so far behind up well. Um, were up well just that good or were we unfortunate with certain decisions that were made? No, it's, it's a long time ago. Uh, it's hard to speak from the distance, but uh, um, as far as I remember, it was um, these games with Apple. Uh, they were, um, how to say, it's a, it's real derby and um, maybe it, it, we were not supposed to lose these games. Yeah. Uh, but they were in good form and, um, you know, with the, they were not changing too much team. And they were playing uh, very, very well. They had uh, very fast players on the flanks and uh, endangering us from outside and scoring uh, from one touch uh, from the crossings. It was uh, more luck. We were maybe not lucky that much and not in, 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 in that much good shape as they were in that moment. But um, if, we, if we kept the team uh, as ammonia in that time, uh, with a couple of uh, additional players on the quality we had, uh, we could go on uh, much, much better in the next season if we stayed. Uh, because, uh, as Marin said, it was a really good uh, connection and a really good atmosphere in the club. Although we came uh, to the club, we were in the, in the position six and we were struggling uh, with uh, Salamina and, uh, and, and, and they, we were uh, fighting with them to, to, to go up. So uh, from that moment, the things started to go up. But bringing new players, bringing fresh blood, and uh, putting uh, in operation the principles of the game that we wanted uh, to implement in, in defense, offense, in, in both transitions, it was uh, not possible to go that much fast. So uh, maybe for, for that moment, they were better. We were lucky, again, uh, to say and to stress to, to, to reach uh, the Europe and uh, to fulfill the target of the club uh, in that moment because it was a very difficult uh, moment. We came in November, in, in May we were playing the final of the cup, nobody expected. And uh, it was the only way, uh, we were targeting uh, this way to get to reach the Europe, to, to through the cup, because the people in the club were not, they didn't believe that we will reach the Europe through the championship. Well, coach, was, if, if you ask me, I believe that in that year, uh, you deserve to win the uh, to win uh, the cup. Um, you you have made uh, drastic changes in the performance of, of the team since you since the pair of you came, and and I'm sure that if if uh, you stayed in Omonia uh, with the uh, any additions that were needed to be done and uh, whatever actions you would have to take, I think Omonia would have been on a different level and. Uh, will be a lot more successful, to be honest. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Dabizas, uh, I remember, came uh, as a sport director in the end of the season. And uh, uh, that was initiative of uh, Vladan Milojevic uh, to help the club uh, operating on the higher level and uh, to have the sport director. And uh, they brought uh, Mr. Mr. Dabizas. Uh, he's very experienced. He was a big name playing in uh, England. Uh, Greek, uh, speaking the Greek language, but uh, the, the the communication between the coach uh, and the vision of the coach and sport director uh, was not uh, matching. And uh, Vladan decided uh, uh, to leave Ammonia, although it was a very good moment for us to continue. And maybe that would be much, much better for the club in that moment. But since uh, there was a, not a common language and understanding concerning uh, how to uh, how to improve uh, the team in the half season during the summer break uh, uh, Vladan decided uh, not to to participate in the project not to take uh, responsibility and uh, to leave somebody else uh, choose and decide uh, who is going uh, to come uh, uh, join the squad because it's very important if you choose the coach uh, then the coach is the one to to according to his vision, choose the players, and it was not the case. So Vladan decided to leave. Fortunately, we went uh, to Panionias and we made a great season there. Golden that, history. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. With the club, which which was struggling the same way as Amonia was struggling in Cyprus a uh, year before. After that season, we were invited by Red Star. The officials came to 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 Athens, and uh, after the results we made uh, with Panionios, unexpectedly, uh, they they offered the the contract, and then we did the same with the Red Star. Um, breaking all the records uh, and uh, bringing the club after so many years to group stage of uh, UEFA competitions and now it's going in a row for uh, I don't know I cannot count I think six years is is almost six years yes. in a row coach I wanted to I wanted to ask you uh, the feeling from from the Omonia fans was that uh, they did not want the coaches to leave Omonia the fans wanted the the coaches to stay and the coaches the the fans did understand that the reason that in the end you and mr milojevic left was because of the uh, of mr davizas was it so difficult to cooperate with him that you you could not have stayed there was no uh, way to find a middle ground so that uh, you could also stay and uh, work things out if there was a wish uh, from the from the sport director to keep the coaches, he would do that. Uh, I would rather say that he didn't have a wish uh, to keep us there and uh, that he wanted to make the uh, environment suitable for him uh, and uh, for his own visions. So um, he was not paying uh, that much attention. If you, if you want somebody to keep, then you sit, then you offer solutions, then you negotiate, then you showing uh, that... Uh, you respect the value of uh, of the coach and then you, you then, then you act in that uh, respect but he didn't show that and uh, it was a clear signal that uh, collaboration in future would be very problematic and very dangerous for the reputation of the coaches so so uh, Vlad and me, and me decided and also Christopher Zecha to to leave uh, the club and uh, not to to go on anymore Marine, when you see a head coach coming into the club and then you joining and the club making progress in such a short period of time, getting to the cup final, okay, losing it just about, and then at the end of the season, everyone from the coaching staff leaves. As a player, what are you thinking? What's going on in your head? First, I will come back a little bit on your conversation with, with Vlado. First, uh, you speak and you ask Vlado, about the season when Apoel was better than us, much better. In this moment when Vlado and Milojevic was there, uh, I don't know if I remember good, our best contract was like 150,000 per year. All the contracts were five, six, seven, eight thousand euro. And in Apoel, in this moment, 300,000 maybe was one average contract. And now we speak up, of course, Football is football is not money. Football is football. But of course, they can bring better player than Omonia in this moment. You cannot compare player from 5,000 euro with player for 25, 30, 35,000 euro. Mm. You can try. You can train hard. You can do... You can, you can be more motivated. You can win the game. You, yeah. can, you can win the game because it's football. But That's the case. Yes, that's the case. But in that moment, was quality was really on side of upper, and it was very hard to do something. I agree. In this moment, because because in Monia, in this moment was, Vlado, you remember, like salaries two months late after one salary come, two salary late one. Third. In upper, in this moment, they had every month thirty, forty thousand euro get the salary. They have quality players. They have good atmosphere. When they come there, in Omonia was, you know, it was not clean situation with money, with uh, funds, with uh, atmosphere, with everything was, you know, everything was, I don't know how to say, but nothing, you, you was not sure in nothing in this time in Omonia. You was not sure that you will get the salary. You was not sure that everything will be good after two months. Yes. So, was, and, so and, how, and, how did you, and how did you survive and, then? How no, you survive? And, and, and if you, and if we speak about the final of the cup, my opinion, 
now after a long long time and now I'm also in the football I'm coach and you know I I think about football but in that moment it was very bad moment to do things what we do in that moment so for me I told you before even now with Vlad or even now I always say for me the business was very good for Romani he tried to do good things after six months what he tried he tried his best but for me the problem was that before the final cup we start to speak with players with you will go you will stay coach will go coach will not go and 20 days before the final cup all what we do we speak about that for me so, uh, for me if the visa for me if the visa if omonia decide to bring the visa after final cup you start to work because Marine, in dressing so, sorry, in, uh, in, in dressing in dressing room in that moment you know sport director new come nobody know who will stay who will go 10 players knew before the final cup that they leave and was that that is us telling everyone or was it someone else okay they know they speak that is a speak with uh, everybody of us individually he 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 want to oh, hear wow. what I, what i want what vlad want he speak but you know if you start to speak before the final cup about these things you cannot think just about the game are you serious now marine people what? before the cup final knew that they were going to be leaving the club at the end of the season of, of course of course some players Holy knew shit. before of course and it is true it's, it's you know i say like it was like this i always say the truth and for me i just say i, I didn't say it, not that was wrong i just say the mom, uh, the moment of the things was very very bad for the team so if you know you play your last game in omonia you know maybe you don't give your 100% Yes. Well, you you'd think that because it's a cup final players would want to play to their best abilities but of course the, of course of course at the same time they're thinking well even if I win we're going to get into Europe but I'm not going to play because I'm gone so I need to start looking elsewhere I need to think about my family I need to find a house of course. I need to find a club I need to it's, it's it's not easy it's not easy to just keep that that thing when you know It's, it's difficult it's difficult my friend if you came the, after the, the the game in the dressing room you see 80% of the play, of the players they cry we really want we really want to win the cup but you know if you remember and vlado remember 20 days before when new sport director came it was just everybody of us think what will be what will be after the final cup if i go if i stay If I if I go, I need to st start to search a new club. I need to call my agent. Uh, uh, if I stay, what will be with me? If I will play, if I will not play, who will be the coach? Uh, if the coach will stay, if, you know. And for me, it was good. It was really good to bring sport director, but after the season. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes this sense. This is this is my opinion. I don't know, Vlad, or if you if you remember or if you agree, but my opinion it was like this. Marin. I agree with Marin because this is just uh, the matter of the culture of the club and the, of uh, understanding of the management. When is the moment uh, to bring someone and to put him in charge? He was much earlier uh, in charge than he was supposed to be to keep uh, the, 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 the squad uh, in peace, to keep the squad um, uh, motivated on the maximum level and prepare the, uh, without any concerns. Uh, what is going to be. And he started to make these uh, interviews uh, 20 days uh, before the end and he was inviting player by player. But you know, from my experience, I know how the player, players react. They're like a family. They go, they speak with each other. Of course, they know each other's situations. Uh, they, they're helping each other. They're uh, supporting each other. So it's normal to share information. And when you start to share the information, It goes and is spreading like disease. And of course, and if there is a concern, if there's any, anything negative inside, and uh, as there were some, some, some troubles, we tried to keep this uh, away and uh, to, to suppress it, and not to expose it, and uh, to keep the spirit of the team on the top level. 
But of course, you have the guys, young guys with the families concerned from from different countries uh, where they're gonna end up, etc., etc., etc. So everything uh, for sure um, affected a little bit uh, players. But I'm sure also that all of them wanted to win the cup. I'm sure. sure. That's, what, that's true. That's true. That's true. And, that's true. And that's true. And there was no any doubts that we were not performing the trainings and preparations in the top level. Even we made a very special video with the families before the, the, the final cup game. And we presented expectations of all the families in front of uh, all the players. So it was very nice and emotional and uh, boosting, boosting, boosting. Uh, a uh, moment uh, for the for the sorry i have to switch off uh, and, and it was the boosting uh, for the for the team in 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 the end uh, we were unlucky to win this final and uh, there was some decisions uh, maybe uh, which were not in favor of um, of the game in that moment we conceded of course uh, of course me me on the bench yes yeah yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I joke, and, I joke, I joke. Yeah, uh, we were, uh, how to say, we played the game three days before, four days before we played in, in a la last championship game for the third place with, with Apollon. We played in, uh, in uh, Nicosia. And uh, we lost that game because we wanted... To, sh to save uh, the most of the players to be fresh for the final. And it was not enough. We were beaten in, in two games. With the weaker team, they, they, they came with the first team. They, 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 they win 2-1, if I well remember. And, and, the, and, the, and the final, we lost 2-1. So, um, yeah, Pablo, I, I think know. it was Pablo Lisa got, got the winner in Lefkosia. I think Pablo Lisa got the winner to make it 2-1. In the the one we, we lost in Lefkosia also, yeah. uh, championship, yeah. last championship game. Uh, if, we, if, if we won that game or if we played draw, we would be third, third place in the end. Yeah, We were one point yeah. ahead of uh, uh, Apollo in that moment. Well, well I guess uh, a cup is better than uh, third place. He, who, who can blame you about uh, saving the uh, strength of the team for... Uh, getting a cup uh, instead of getting a third place. It's understandable. It's okay, but any, anyhow, it was uh, the place that uh, uh, taking Ammonia to Euro qualifications, so no problem. There's no big deal, yeah, no. Vladimir, you mentioned that you guys spoke to Dabizas about maybe pushing things forward, and then there was obviously a disagreement which led to you guys leaving. I wasn't surprised to see John Carver come in afterwards because Carver was part of Newcastle. I, I'm guessing that's how Dabizas knew him. But the thing is, at what point did you guys say to yourselves, this isn't going to work? Because as far as I'm aware, there was a lot of financial problems at the club. I don't think it was mostly the money that was the problem. Can you pinpoint exactly the, the things that may have led to you guys deciding to, to leave? I'm sure that Vladan knows uh, much better because he was a head coach and uh, uh, he had um, meetings um, that I was not participating for sure as his assistant and there was no need for me to, to be present there. So he felt uh, better that moment. And when you're assistant coach, of course, you're listening uh, to the head coach and uh, um, <clears throat> accepting uh, opinion and feelings uh, that he have uh, about the certain things. Of course, uh, we spoke about things, and in the end, it was it was a uh, decision uh, done that uh, we we should we should leave we should leave we should not extend because it was uh, from the conversation that Vladan uh, had with uh, with the business, uh, it it was not leading in a good direction. Well, that's understandable. Um, going back to the league campaign, can you remember your, your favourite moments, the famous wins or the big wins? Because I remember we beat back beat unorthodoxy 3-0 three, three back-to-back home and away in the, uh, in the playoffs. Uh, yes, we, it was a great game uh, uh, in Lanaka. 
we played there. Uh, the great games I remember with I, we were successful. It was a uh, game uh, that we won, I think, uh, one goal difference, 3-1 or 3-2, something like that in, in Lafkozia. Uh, and um, there was also a very good game that we played with Ike uh, in, uh, in uh, Lanaka and also with, uh, with an Orthosy. These are the, the, the games that I uh, remember well. I, I also re remember the game. It was a very interesting game against NOC in uh, Paralimni. We won that game uh, there, and it was also 4-3 um, or something like that. It was a uh, uh, high result. And of course, I remember our first game that we played uh, against Isle in uh, Limassol. We won 1-2 uh, there. Nice, nice. Oh, no, 1-0, I think. 1-0, minimal result. And then there was a, a first clash with the players on the pitch in that game, as far as I can remember, with, uh, with uh, Ljubljanidze. And that was uh, the reason that he leaves the, the club. He was uh, arguing with the coach on his instructions. And he was put aside and uh, very fast started the the transfer uh, winter transfer window and uh, he he was just uh, moved away on the second team and uh, he left the club okay okay well um when you guys joined the club obviously there's a, a few players there pretty big names a lot, a lot of fans respected Nuno Sis being one of them what can you guys tell us about this player because everyone wanting a fan knows that he's a legend but well, as as a coach and as a player Marin what do you, what do you two, uh, think about Nuno? Genius. Genius. In the football pitch, he is genius. It was very pleasure to play with him. It's big player. It's it's totti. I don't know how to say. It was it was very good to play with him. Always when you give him ball, you know you can you can rest, you can relax. You know that he will do something. He was nice guy in the dressing room. Never loud. Always quit. Always on the side with no problem with him, and the football pitch was amazing. I remember uh, Nuno. Nuno is first of all uh, a great personality. He's uh, he's he's very strong, and uh, you can you can feel uh, that he he's uh, valuable uh, as a player, as a person uh, in every contact, uh, in his behavior. Uh, he was uh, always the last one uh, on the warm-up, getting out every time we were waiting for him. He was showing uh, in, in every moment that he is a star and that he has to be uh, specially treated. So, so he, he, he deserved that. And, uh, of course, he never uh, abused uh, this fact, but uh, he, was, he was showing that and uh, he was behaving as, as a special player, and he was that uh, in the pitch, he was that in dressing room, he was that as a person. Uh, Marin knows much better uh, their relation uh, uh, in the dressing room because it's very special. You cannot comment, I cannot comment that, but I, I can say that I was a very special bond because I was playing very often with the players, and uh, I was that one uh, special bond uh, with, with the technical stuff. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. Well, well, Vladimir, uh, Marin has told us uh, some stories about Killian Sheridan. Yeah. <laughs> what was he like to coach? What was he like to coach? Uh, Killian. Yeah, he was uh, also a very good striker, a uh, very special person. Um, he was a totally different character from all other players uh, uh, with his uh, style, with his moustache and... Uh, uh, long hair and you know, uh, uh, very, very special guy. He was reminding me on on some uh, guys uh, that I met uh, in the 1982 in England. You know, they were looking like that in, in, in that years. So, 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 so he was like that and uh, driving his uh, black Land Rover and <laughs> very, very special guy. And I remember my crosses for him on the trainings. Uh, with the left foot from the full sprint. It was good on his head directly. So <laughs> and that's what I remember. <laughs> the, the thing is that that squad had so so many different varieties of players. Obviously, Marin and, you know, we mentioned Nuno, Fofana, 
Uh, I think was was, yes. was Potes still there as well, Pedro, if I'm not mistaken. Was Mika Potes still there? No, it was Romaric. No, was it was, it was Romaric. Romaric. Not right, Potes, okay. it was Romaric. Romaric. Romaric, Hafez, Ramos. Ah, we yes, 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 yes. I wasn't sure. Marin, maybe... Sorry, still. Margasa. Uh, Mari, yeah. maybe you can tell us about uh, which other people from that squad would you like put up there? Who do you think were the most influential influential players in that squad? You think about the characters on the dressing room or quality quality of uh, playing? In, in general, or... in general, as a package. general, you know, Nuno was when I came there. Nuno was up. Nobody was, you know, nobody was close to him. Like like coach said, he was you know he was star, he was star, and Nuno Nuno was Nuno, and that's it. Uh, that season, I think it was uh, Romaric was uh, you know in Romaric in in every moment in the football uh, when you play with him, when you speak with him, when you joke with him, you can see the quality. You yeah. really can see the quality. Okay, he had coach maybe eight to ten kilos more, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. He was but, struggling. But, he was but struggling. you know, if, but, but yes, but if you play with him, you feel the quality. You feel the something different. We were all there. He was, you know, he was up. He was up. You can see. You can feel. If you play with him, you feel this. Hey, it was very good players. Uh, Seridan, Skembri, that moment. Uh, Marcasa, uh, uh, Christophe. Christophe is uh, Christophe is big name, big player also. So it was. Uh, we had good squad, good players, uh, good uh, characters. You know, I I never had. A, we changed. You know, we changed all the all the squad in the when the business came. But I never met uh, in Omonia like some player that will make some problems or some bad character. Really, it was it was nice squad. Really nice squad. Yes, yes, yes. Good friendship, uh, good relationship. Uh, yes, everybody, yes. Everybody were in the place. Nobody yes. was mistreated uh, in any way from anybody. So, so and we were yes. <laughs> and after that, next season, what was Matt? Huh? Matt, Matt came. Derbyshire came, and he was he took the he took the place of of uh, of uh, Nuno. Yes. Yeah, that was, yeah. Yeah, something yes, something special. Something one special. legend following another legend. You, yes. The thing is, you mentioned Christophe, and he's just been released from anorthosy. Um, And if I'm not mistaken, Pedro, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't 2015 the year when he joined from Sion, when everyone got together and, and helped? Bring, yes, it was back? in uh, 2015 that the fans of Omonia gathered the money to bring uh, Christophe back to Omonia. Yeah. So Vladimir, I'm sure you guys must have heard about that when you when you joined the club. What did you make of that? Was that anything different to what you've seen before? Uh, about Christophe? Yeah. Yeah, I, I just remember that he was struggling very much with injuries. And uh, um, expectations were much, much higher from him. And he couldn't get into the form due to constant uh, uh, injuries uh, of the hamstring because he's a sprinter and every time uh, when he was coming back we were putting him from the bench he was mostly playing uh, as far as I can remember from the bench rarely he was uh, in starting 11 when he was in starting 11 then he was in continuity of the couple of games and later he was uh, re renewing uh, his injury and um, that's how I remember Christophe as a big potential, much bigger, uh, with with, uh, with the much bigger expectations, and he was really bringing that, uh, bringing it uh, to the to the team uh, on on the pitch. And after he was uh, uh, participating for the national team, uh, uh, as soon as we finished the cup and season, he uh, I met him in the airport. He was traveling uh, with the national team and playing the games for the national team, but he was uh, very much struggling with the, with the injuries. And that season we had Skembri. I think Skembri must have got about 10, 11 goals, if I'm not mistaken. Got something Around like that. He, he, he was a special yeah. player, wasn't he? Yes. Yes, he was very good. Uh, Skembri was uh, number one uh, striker. And uh, uh, Sheridan was uh, coming from time to time or playing when he was uh, not available. But uh, also 
I remember that he was uh, missing uh, some chances in some games or something was not going good because it's uh, the most visible is uh, with the strikers. So uh, even his uh, constitution, he was uh, not the one uh, uh, strong uh, number nine. He was uh, a light number nine. And uh, it was um, very difficult in a team like uh, Omonia was in that time uh, to, 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 to be... Uh, uh, we didn't have that fast players from the side that he would use much better. If he, if he would have uh, much better wingers in that period, uh, he would show much, much uh, more quality. But uh, okay, uh, any, anyhow, uh, he was uh, he was used. Uh, I may say that uh, moment um, on the maximum. I've got a question that is uh, related to the current Omonia situation, um, and I'm sure Bedrock, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, obviously, with Baba Stavro now stepping down at the time of recording, Baba Stavro is still his resignation still stands, and we don't know what's going to happen if he's going to be reinstated. I don't know. And it just appears to me that if Baba Stavro does leave Omonia, we will probably be worse off financially now than what we were back then. Um, I, I don't know. What, what do you think, Better? Do you think that's a fair statement to make? Uh, not completely worse financially because th there is a deposit of some money left to the side for Omonia. We should be okay, but not to be uh, like... Uh, a, a team chasing for the championship, not with the money that we will ha we will have this year if Papa Stavro leaves. And don't forget, we got players on big wages. That is what I'm taking into account as well. Yeah, the players yeah. are on bigger wages now than what they were then. I mean, Marin was mentioning these players were like eight grand. <laughs> we got players on 300, 400, half a million. You know, so it's, it's going to be a bigger financial deficit. So what what you know, you two knowing the modern game knowing Cyprus, knowing the way that things are done. When you hear about the president that has you know, looked after the club as, as quit and he's saying that the club owe him 16 million euros, what, 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 does that, what goes in your head when you think about these things? It's a disaster. It's a disaster. It's a, it's a shutting down uh, the club. So uh, you came, uh, you brought the money and... Uh, uh, I think it's disaster because I don't know. Uh, you have to find somebody to find the interests uh, to put uh, back uh, 60 million to somebody that the club is owing and uh, to to invest uh, uh, additional money and uh, to make out of it uh, profit. Uh, football today on that level is, uh, is is more business than sport. Sport is uh, for the spectators. And for the people who are involved directly in financial uh, aspects of the club and organization are there for the business, uh, not uh, for um, making the victories. The victories are just the part of producing uh, the profit. So I think uh, if, if that's the case, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a disaster for our money. It's a disaster. I have a, I have a question for, for both of you. Sorry, still, yeah, go ahead. No, 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 far away, far away, far away. Sorry. Uh, I have a question for both coach and, uh, and Marin. I don't know if you're, if you're still following the, the Cyprus football, the Cyprus league. Uh, obviously, things have changed a lot since uh, you two have been in yes. Cyprus. And uh, many teams are now progressing. Um, if, you have, if you still have the knowledge of the Cyprus football league, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, Marin, will you, will you speak? Yo, 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 first coach, yo, first. Okay. Uh, as far as I can see, uh, uh, many clubs are uh, bought uh, by the foreign uh, investors and um, Russian people from Russia, mostly, yeah. And uh, they found the interest and uh, in building up the new stadiums. Uh, I'll, yeah, Auraris. Uh, uh, I saw that stadium was building because I was going uh, from Larnaca to Paphos for preparation. With uh, it was close to the, the highway on, on the way to Paphos on the yeah, left side. Yes, yes. it's Aris. Aris. Yes, Aris. it's Aris, Aris Ael, and Abolon together. Same with and the city. Yeah. Same it, it, same it, it looks city. it looks it looks very nice, and it's obvious. Um, I, I I had information about the Paphos as well. Uh, that uh, the clubs are uh, now progressing and a lot of money is invested. So where I see uh, uh, salvation for, uh, for Ammonia is uh, if some of investors find the interest 
to invest in the history of Ammonia and the greatness of that club in Cyprus. That's uh, that's the, the 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 biggest value of of Ammonia for for me and from the point of the business. Also, it's good that uh, the, a lot of money is invested in other clubs because uh, the competition is going to be much more uh, interesting and uh, for sure the uh, in the future. Uh, 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 Cyprus clubs will find uh, uh, their place in the in the league's uh, uh, conference league, uh, UEFA Europa League, maybe maybe Champions League again, like Apple did uh, uh, in the years uh, uh, before. So um, from that point of view, you can find the interest uh, investing money there. But I don't know; it has to be a really special project from my point of view. Money. If you speak about ammonia, I don't uh, have nothing to, you know, it's too much love, too much love from yeah. people to this club. I, I really don't know. I, in my head is that even this 16 million, if you, if I hear good 16 million, I think the people from ammonia, the fans, they, they will find if they want, because the ammonia is not, ammonia is not just a club, just a, I don't know, job. Ammonia is ammonia is like like Hajduk split in Croatia or Red Star in uh, in in, yeah. in Serbia. You know, ammonia is ammonia is ammonia, and ammonia will never fall down. This is in my head. If you speak about ammonia, if you speak about the league, about the, I think the Cyprus League can go just up, just up because, like uh, coach said, you know, it's first of all Cyprus is very nice to live live there. Cyprus is a very nice country with nice culture. Cy Cyprus is safe country. And if you have this beauty of nature, if you save the if you have the safe family, of course the Russians, the, the, the people will come there, they will inv invest there, they will invest steady and they will invest in football. And I think in my opinion the Cyprus League will go just from year to year, just up and up and up. Absolutely. And we're seeing the quality improve. For example, Addis that won the league for the first time in 92 years. And you look at the players that they've got there, you know, Kokorin, who's a Serie A quality player, you know, yeah, this player yeah. can play in the, in the top league in Italy and for him to come to Cyprus and be the MVP, it doesn't surprise me. But I want to quickly talk about uh, Mr. Milojevic and his season at Aboel. Because don't forget, he joined the club after the window closed in summer. He wasn't able to bring in any players they went on an incredible uh, unbeaten streak and they they lost the league with two games to go. I think they, they lost to Abolon um, and they were still in the hunt for the title. But uh, Vladimir, I know they had a lot of injuries this season and Abol fans are clearly saying, you know, if, if they didn't have those injuries, they would have gone on to win the league. I'm not too sure about this, but then again, with the resources that Mr. Milojevic had, I think he did a fantastic job. And don't forget, in January, he only brought in two players, Ben from Red Star and Makeda. And Ben, he was okay, but he got a serious injury that put him out for the season. And Makeda just didn't work. So uh, for me, for him to leave tells me that there were problems at the club, which we know about. Their financial, their, our board's finances are 10 times worse than Armonia's. It's, it's even worse. Um, but what did you make of his... Uh, his uh, time at Abuel. Uh, it was expected. Uh, when I when I saw that he is going there, I knew that he is going uh, to make a good result. Uh, I knew who who was uh, the part of his technical staff, and uh, all these people are very much dedicated, and uh, serious results are behind them. Uh, so um, it was expected. Um, they they just did uh, what was uh, uh, something. Um, remarkable for for uh, for his career to win the games 1 0 winning in the row nine games when he came uh, so it showed that there is there is a work there is something changed uh, the, the 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 they are struggling but they're winning it was that case so after uh, uh, as long uh, the the championship goes on uh, the the problems are coming the the cards are coming the injuries are coming the, the club is not functioning on the top level. It's not uh, bringing uh, what's necessary uh, to the treatment of the players. Uh, probably financials are uh, bringing a lot of concerns to the players, nervous, etc., etc., etc. 
And in the end, when you're competing with uh, some club that is functioning well, it is in the end this, this difference that is deciding who is going to, to pass first through the gate. And uh, that's what happened in the end. They were struggling, 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 struggling. And uh, the string uh, bro has broken in the end. It was broken in the end. Yeah, and, and the thing is, when you look at the, the injuries that they had, especially defensive areas, Wheeler picked up injuries, uh, Susic picked up injuries. There were injuries all over the team. And they still finished the season with the best defensive record. Now, there's a strong rumour in the newspapers that he could go to Buffer. And we know that Buffer have got a lot of money. They're not afraid to spend it. And with Milojevic there, they're going to have the stability and be better defensively. So I honestly think that they will be they'll be favourites to win the league next season. Depends on if I just spend well, which they have done. They brought in two Serbian players, but I still think that if Milojevic goes to Buffalo, I think they will be bigger favourites than Addis. My opinion, anyway. For sure, uh, Buffalo is uh, is is a club uh, that is investing uh, in 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 years in behind uh, lots of uh, money and a lot of effort to obtain uh, uh, the top level uh, functioning club and they are doing that uh, i was in contact uh, through uh, my agents and i knew that uh, Mitchell salgado was involved in the uh, involved uh, uh, very much in operations after Mitchell salgado now is uh, again spanish director famous player and um, for sure it is it is something that is showing ambition of the club to compete and uh, to find the solution to to step in uh, place number one. For sure, there is a big ambition. For sure, the PAFO is the place which has uh, spectators and the club is uh, hungry for the for the titles. And uh, I think it's it's a good it's a good place uh, to start. And to continue with the, with the career, so if uh, if that uh, is uh, is manageable or uh, they make uh, these agreements, I I believe that uh, Pafo is going to 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 be a very strong uh, candidate for the for the championship title. Lovely, and I've got yeah. one more question, and it's relating to the club that you started your managerial career, uh, Chukarici. Is that how you pronounce it? Yes, Chukarički. Yeah, yeah, yeah Chukarički. So I know that Dusan Kerkes is out there. He's done a yes. fantastic job. I think they finished third, if I'm not mistaken, third in the table. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. It's a remarkable achievement. It must be great for you as a you know this is a club that you once coached and also the fans. Chukarički is a club uh, since Vladan and me were there. Uh, we won uh, the the one and only trophy in the history of hundred years of that club. So we did it in uh, season 2014-2015. And uh, we brought the club from the second league uh, to the first league. And in the first season, we qualified for the uh, Europa, uh, 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 Europa League qualifications. And uh, after that, we won uh, the cup and we finished in the third place. And since then, we, the club is uh, keeping uh, stability and uh, every year is finishing as a third or fourth position mostly if you if you if you can see in the in the wikipedia you can see the statistics that the Jukarički is stable number 3 club for for so many years so bringing uh, Kerkes from Isle and uh, putting him there you are putting the coach into one uh, very stable environment and uh, the club uh, that uh, is uh, now with the value of about 20 million euros uh, in players on the on the transfer market so it is uh, uh, saying just about uh, the the owner of the club mr obradovic who was uh, constantly investing money since 2012 when he bought the club in the in the spring uh, to this moment and uh, the club is very well organized very much experienced with the sport director that is in the position for, uh, I think, eight years in a row. Very nice, very nice. And uh, Marin, how's your coaching going, bro? Good. I was uh, last year, I 
I was coaching one third division club. We won the league, so I had offer from right. second second league. So this season we, I came in uh, I think November. Uh, it was tenth place. We finished the seventh, uh, one point from fourth place, and we won we won the cup. So it's it's good. It's okay. Congratulations, congratulations, Maria. No, no, I just start. I just start, but it's okay. The things go, the, the things going back. We will see. It yeah, is it'll, be, it'll, be, it'll be a Monia coach one day. We'll get him <laughs> yeah, we will see. Why not? We will see. Why not? We will see. <laughs> Martin, Martin belongs belongs uh, uh, to the to the uh, uh, Croatian coaches and uh, Croatian football, uh, which is uh, uh, showing uh, in, in last uh, 10, 15 years uh, in the best light. Uh, the country of the of four of four and a half million uh, uh, citizens uh, reaching to the final of the World Cup uh, uh, for the second time and uh, winning so much is is uh, is yes. just uh, a case where uh, I'm uh, many times emphasizing how they're uh, uh, helping each other, the colleagues. If one goes. Uh, uh, they are helping others. Uh, they have very good coaching uh, organization. Uh, the Football Association of Cro uh, Cro Croatia is helping very much, and they are very well organized, and they are very good example uh, for many countries in the region of Balkans how they should act and how how people should uh, behave and callings uh, toward each other. And that's the case over there. Congrats. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Vlad. Also, congrats to you. To, to Vlad. You do a lot of good things. You and coach before. Now you. I follow everything. So, thank you. It's, not, thank it's, you. Not, it's, nice to, it's nice to see the people who, who really live football. Because you are one of the, one of the person who live the football. Who live the... You, I think even you dream football. And it's yes. very nice, and and I'm and, and I'm happy that you start to uh, work alone, and uh, I hope in the future you have a, have an amazing career. I really hope. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. I'm just giving my best and uh, enjoying uh, work. So we'll see what is going to bring, but I believe it's going to bring uh, uh, nice things because the, if 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 you do the job you love, you already won. Of course, I agree. That's the case for football. Sure. For sure. I agree. Petro, you got any more questions, bro? I have one question for the coach. Uh, mm. You, in 2014, you got the first uh, cup for a team that it was the first trophy after 89 years of existence, beating Batizan. What was the feeling of such an achievement? 89 years, a club in existence, no trophies, no nothing, and then you are there and you win a cup. That is uh, example when the, when the club uh, people have ambition and everyone is streaming toward striving toward a common aim and goal. And that was the, the, the clear example. Small club coming a year before from the second league, uh, building up, uh, creating a new culture, uh, uh, getting established again uh, from the foundations and uh, uh, beating in the final partisan. It was just that kind of energy that you are collecting the players who are young, who are ambitious, that you are bringing the player with a, uh, with a good uh, history to link, lead young players. And uh, putting all this together and bringing uh, ambitious coaches and coaching staff, then you get this result in the end, even with the smaller clubs. That's what happens with the Leeds a uh, couple of years ago in the, in, in the Premiership. That's it. That kind of example. Although we, we, we couldn't be champions, it's, it's impossible with the Red Star and Partizan. <laughs> And of course, uh, from from many reasons. I mean, uh, much much uh, more organized clubs, uh, stronger clubs, uh, with the better players, with uh, much better financials. It's it's really difficult, but it's uh, the chance is always in the cup. In the cup, it's one game, and uh, you can win. Yeah. 
Yeah. If you're lucky. You have to be lucky also. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time, coach. Thank you. Another coach. Sorry, Marina, you're a coach as well. What am I talking about? No, 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 no. In your eyes, I'm still a player. Of course, of course. My brother, man, come on. Come on. Yes, 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 yes. Vlado is coach. I will be one day. Easy. No, 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 no. No, no. That's example how you are becoming a coach because you're pointing to the other. You're the coach. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic well boys and girls thank you for tuning in to another edition of no chofters don't forget we've got a facebook page discord uh don't forget to like subscribe and tell your nunna until next time